everyone, it's Annabelle and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at part two of a media test series that I started a few weeks ago. I'll link that up in the corner and down below. And this is seven days after the initial experiment looking at drying times and also then at a later part looking at wicking efficiency and how it wicks water up from a reservoir to the top layer. So what I'm going to do now, it's been seven days, I'm going to take some weights and see how much water has evaporated from the pot, which tells us both roughly what sort of wet dry cycle we would be expecting if we were going to be using these in place of traditional organic media in a regular or traditional setup, um, but also it'll tell us the extent to which these media lose water over time, which may also contribute to the dry top layer in a semi-hydro sort of wicking type setup. So we're just going to take some dry weights. We're going to start off with the organic media. We're going to yeah, measuring the weight after seven days following the 24 hour soak and see how much water has been lost over those seven days. So I'm just going to start off taking a zero of the empty cup. I'm going to start off with sphagnum moss. I'll be putting the starting weights up in the corner from the first part of this experiment. So that's measuring 84 grams, so it was 5 grams dry and then 111 grams wet. The medium grade bark, which is a pine bark, it's now at 74 grams. The small grade pine bark, which you can see is still quite damp at the bottom of the cup there. measuring at 80 grams, down from 96 grams. The extra large grade fraction pine bark is measuring at 88 grams, down from 98 grams. So that's the organic media all done. Now going to move on to some inorganic materials. So will start off with lacquer. So lacquer is measuring 137 grams, down from 155 grams. This is the ST, or Kyodama, from Kaizen Bonsai. And that's measuring 232 grams, down from 255. The lava rock, which you can actually see in there, is still quite moist at the bottom. Seven days later, it's now 267 grams. Its dry weight was 250 grams, so it has lost most of that water. It's super light black, which looks like very small lacquer. It's a material from Kaizen Bonsai. It's now at 95 grams, down from 115, 118 grams. So we're now going to move on to the pumice, and this is the various different sizes of pumice that I tried out. We'll start off with the small pumice from Kaizen Bonsai. You can see that there is a difference in how the pumice actually looks when it's crispy dry compared to when it's still got some slight moisture. So just flick off the top layer, you can see that dark colour is obviously still a bit moist, whereas the lighter colour is fully dried. So we'll look at 150 grams down from 175 grams, and the dry weight before any of the soaking was 112 grams. So it's still got quite a lot of moisture in there. Obviously in a cup is one thing, and when you put it in with an orchid, another thing might happen. Let's look at the larger grade from the same brand as the smaller grade now. So the Kaizen Bonsai larger grade pumice is now at 126 grams, down from 147 grams. Next, if we look at a comparable grade, um, slightly smaller than the large Kaizen Bonsai, this is the Lava Light brand of pumice that I'd been using up until recently. And that's now at 176 grams, down from 195 grams. And last but not least, we're going to look at the extra large grade pumice sent to me by Orchid Garden and see how much moisture has been retained in that pot. You can still see a few little specks of moisture in there. So that's now at 113 grams, and that's down from 133 grams after 24 hours soaking water, and the dry weight was 95 grams. It's still got some moisture in there. I'll now put a graph up on screen of how much water each cup has lost over the seven day period and we can normalise that to obviously the starting weight and just look at this as per cup, per volume. It's not going to be as exact as if we were going to do it per gram but also I think this is maybe more relevant. So I'll put that up on screen and we'll have a little chat about it. 
So what I've done is I've put up on screen the graph that we originally used in the first part of this media test, which showed the saturated um, weight and the amount of water in grams each cup of media was holding. So it took away the dry weight of the media and just left us with how much water each cup was holding after we'd soaked the media and then drained it off. And then I've plotted the seven day weight on the screen. So the circle, the solid circle at the top of each, above each of the bars is the starting weight. And the downward pointing triangle is the weight that we're left with after seven days. You can see that each of the media has fairly consistently lost around the same amount of water. So it's really that starting weight that is determining um, the weight after seven days and how dry and how approaching dryness each cup of media is so really the rate of evaporation has remained constant which you would expect in the same environment but the initial how much water that each media cup was holding on to is really what determines the end weight which isn't a great surprise and um, the end amount of water being held so it's kind of not that one media is holding on to more water than any of the others honestly um, they're all losing a consistent amount due to evaporation. So for the media tested here, really it isn't the size, shape, uniformity or porosity that determines how much water the media is losing. It's simply the environment that they're placed into. And this has remained the same for all of these. For my next step, what I'm going to do is to take each cup of media and I'm just going to trickle some water up to a set point in the reservoir and we're going to look at how it wicks water to the top. Now this is going to be quite hard to measure and quantify so we're going to have to look, go by general appearances after seven days to see how it wicks water from the bottom of the reservoir to the top. So I'm just going to grab some water and I'll show you how I'm going to do this for these pots. Okay so I've got a jug of water here and we're just going to pour the same amount into the reservoir for each media. So I'm going to do it by level because obviously each media is going to have a different, um, it's going to displace the water to a different level depending on how many air pockets in terms of ratio to the amount of media filling each uh, given volume. So I'm just going to do it by the actual level. I was going to do it by weight but I don't think that's going to be a very um, good way of doing it. So if I take large bark here, I'm going to fill it up to approximately halfway between the bottom and that first line there. And I'm going to use that as a comparison point for the next media. So I have filled all of the cups up to approximately the same level in the reservoir with water and we're going to look at this after a seven day period as to the extent to which the top layer is still dry or whether the wicking efficiency is such that it keeps it wet or how high up at the cup it stays wet. Um, so we're going to come back in seven days and look at that. Okay, so we are back again and it's been seven days. I filled some water into the bottom of each cup um, about a week ago, well, a week ago, and um, we were doing a test to look at wicking efficiency. So basically, I have no way to accurately measure this. This was kind of more of like a, I guess you would call it like qualitative rather than quantitative. Um, it's going by how I feel and how things look rather than me being actually able to measure this with numbers so I find that a little bit difficult but I really can't think of a way to actually measure wicking efficiency in like a quantifiable way so we're just going to have a look and see what's happened and how the media's responded over a week with the same amount of water in the reservoir at the bottom. Now I did the amount of water by volume as opposed to like an exact mill per cup. I filled them all up to the same level in the reservoir um, because like in a small media it's going to take less water to fill up to here than a large media with lots of air gaps. Um, so for example if I added 100 mil to each for like a really large media like the pumice 100 mil might be like here for the large pumice whereas for something like the ST 100 mil might take it all the way to the top which is not that would 
kind of void our results because we're looking at top players and how evenly the moisture's been wicked up from the reservoir throughout the pots and distributed evenly, how dry the top layer is. And if I filled this right up to the top with water, that would completely negate that. So I've tried to fill it to the same level for each cup and then left it over a period of a week. Um, so we're just gonna take a look at some of the organic media first. I've got the inorganic in front of us, but off to the side, we've got the organic. So sphagnum, we've still got quite a bit of water left in the reservoir. It's moist all the way to the top. I do have, I don't know if you can see that, I have mould starting to grow in it. Obviously, I, I haven't filled these up to the top, so it means that this is like a little humid environment. It's been very hot and very dry over the last week. So bear that in mind with my results. We have sort of about 30 degrees Celsius yesterday. Um, it's really hot and dry at the moment here. So any moisture that's left in the cup is great. So sphagnum hasn't, like that's not evaporated that much. We've got about to here. Sorry about my hands, I've been doing lots of moving and gardening and stuff and <laughs> they're a bit gross. Uh, but we've got quite a bit of moisture left in the reservoir. Lots of moisture distributed throughout the cup. Very wet, a little bit of mould on the top. The... I have to familiarise myself with which bark is which now. So this is the small grade, uh, medium grade and large grade. So if we look at the small grade first, small grade bark... We've got lots of moisture still in the reservoir. It's about to here. I'm sorry, you maybe can't see this so well because of how um, dark it is. I've tried to put as many lights on as possible, but so that focused for a second and then stopped focusing. So water's about to here in the reservoir. It's pretty wet in there. You can see quite a lot of... Um, moisture all the way up to about here in the cup but then the top itself is quite dry but if we kind of flake this away you can maybe see the color difference so the top was quite dry you can see some water there it's pretty wet so i would say it's soaking up the water in the reservoir quite well and wicking that up to the top medium grade bark Again, it's really wet in here, I don't know if you can see. And we do actually, it's moist all the way up to the top with this one. It's supposed to be the same type of bark, but I don't know if you can see in there. We've actually got some mould growing on the top of the cup. Because um, obviously it's been staying wet. It's organic media, it's really, really wet in there. Having left water in the bottom, it's wicked it right up to the top. So bark does wick apparently um which honestly i'm finding a lot of these results quite surprising because i had these kind of um preconceptions and um, about some of these medias that maybe weren't true um maybe it was the way i was using them before but apparently bark does wick like i waited for this to dry and then just poured water down the side so that the um bottom of the cup had water in and it is continued to wick it up um, and if we think about how that dried in the period of the week before, having soaked it and then dried it, it was very dry by the end of the week. And yet, well, relatively, it wasn't like this wet still. So it is wicking water up. And then the large grade bark, we still have water in the bottom again, quite a lot. And it's pretty wet in there still. It's wet all the way up to about here. And you can see the difference between in colour between wet and dry. So I've got my uh, I've got loads of lighting on so you can see this better, but it might actually be hindering things. So I'm sorry about that. But wet and then that piece balanced on the top there is dry, and those pieces at the top are dry. So again, that is wicking water. Um who would have known? Honestly, I'm I am surprised at that. But it is wicking, so it potentially could be used in a semi-hydro system I guess with bark I think something like orchiata bark probably wouldn't wick that well I don't have any I used to use it quite a lot and it's quite expensive so I ran it out and then just never replaced as I kind of converted more and more to inorganic media so next if we take a look at the ST the water is up to about here still in the reservoir you might not be able to see that very clearly move it you can see that there's water up to about here and the top's pretty dry but if I kind of move some of these you probably see the difference in terms of moisture 
Right, so we've got to like some very wet areas here. If I just kind of move them, you might be able to see some of the, like this bit here. You see how wet it is? So it's pretty moist all the way up to the top, to be perfectly honest. It's a little bit dry on the top, but then if I kind of stick my finger in, I can feel like it's really wet to about there. And again, this is so difficult to like quantify but this is staying pretty moist um, and if I kind of focus it and move you can see it kind of glistening the moisture levels so it's pretty moist in there and it's wicked pretty well all the way up to the top and again just try some of the odd stuff here this is the um, super light black so I put a reservoir of water in the bottom to about there and then can see how wet it is in that pot and again how do I measure this I'd say it's wet up to about there and then if we actually look at the top of the pot can you see some of the moisture like it's really really moist at the top even if I feel it it's my fingers are coming away quite moist from that and can you see you can just see how moist it is this stuff when it's dry it's like it's like dry lecker it just looks dry and this is like glistening with moisture um, so it's pretty moist all the way up to the top there so one thing I should say is this may not none of these are going to be representative of what actually is going to happen in a pot so in a pot we've got drainage holes at the bottom potentially or if semi-hydro we've got a reservoir of water but we're filling it right up to the top and then we've also got a plant in there that's sucking moisture so we've got lots of different factors at play not just the evaporation you've also got the level of moisture that the plant is using also if the plant is really well rooted in a pot its roots themselves are going to be almost acting as wicks as they suck moisture so a rooted plant versus a plant that's not fully established and doesn't have that many roots may really affect how moisture is distributed through the pot in itself um, as well as the fact that you're potting higher so these this isn't going to be exactly representative but it's kind of the best we can do without doing really extensive experiments with lots of matched plants and I think this can kind of inform us and then we can take that and try it out and it may act differently in a pot and that's something that each environment as well is going to have different factors at play the plant that you're putting in it has different factors at play um, there's lots and lots of variables that mean that ultimately I think that all we can do is try things out and see how they work in our environment with our plants and we can use this kind of thing in a set environment to inform us a bit if we've tried one of these medias and we find oh it's too too wet and I've shown here maybe that one is wetter than the other you could take that forward and try a different media or a different size or a different grade different texture um, different porosity and see how it works in your climate but I think that the main take home here is I'm finding some of these are actually doing things that I don't expect them to do so are my ideas about how they should work affecting how I use them and actually I could get different results if I use them differently but my kind of bias in my head is you know limiting me and I think that it's really important to be open to just trying things out because a lot of the times I've just chucked some media in a pot because I've run low of something else and actually that has been a great combination and then I've kind of tweaked things and found a better solution than if I had just stuck to one media alone so I think that it's really important to try out these different things and just keep an open mind and see because yeah these are surprising me with what they're doing in the pots to be honest so next I'm going to look at lava rock now this one I'm completely shocked by because I started off just I bought lava rock and I tried it out a couple of times and it just seemed really dry and I didn't think it would wick. I just had this idea that it wouldn't wick and I don't know why. I had this idea that it was dry and it wouldn't wick. And so I felt like in the pots it was dry and it would seem to be drying out very quickly in the pots that I was using it in. Um, so I kind of thought it was like a non-wicking version of pumice, but actually like I've put water in a reservoir on the bottom. I don't know if you can see this, but it is like moist even in the top which had dried out before I put this reservoir of water in it is like really really moist on the top there like this bit here is just 
soaking wet. If I put my finger on that, if you can then see the moisture that's on my finger just from touching that top big bit of lava rock that's just balanced on the top there and that had fully dried before I just poured some water down the side here. It's not like I soaked this first and then put some reservoir of water in. I let this dry out for a week. It was pretty much bone dry on the top. I put a bit of water in the reservoir and it's like sucked it right up to the top. So I'm really, really shocked at this, quite honestly. And I think I've been trying this out maybe in the wrong way. So I'm going to try adding this more heavily into mixes. My van does seem to really like lava rock as well. And that's, that's again, confusing. Something the hydroponic growers talk about a lot is air-filled porosity, which is the level of air gaps in a media. And I think that a lot of what we do as orchid growers really relies more on the level of air to water ratio in the media. And so I think that it's really important to understand that. And maybe it isn't how wet an orchid's roots are but more how much oxygen and air is also around those roots. So does that make sense? So like, when we talk about wet dry cycles, maybe something that I've really learnt with vanders is it isn't necessarily keeping them wet all the time that is the problem. It's restricting the amount of oxygen that those roots have access to that seems to be and this is something I've really learnt specifically with vanders and I'm going to come on to this in a later update with my vanders because they, they have really taught me, I think, more than any other orchid when I chuck them into semi-hydro about the importance of the air ratio in the media as opposed to the importance of the moisture ratio in the media, if that makes sense. It's like a trade-off between those two and each orchid has this different point in the middle that it's happy between the air and the water ratio. And it's trying different things in different media and sometimes it's not even about the water ratio it's really about that air ratio if that makes sense so this has surprised me and the way this works surprises me i wonder if it's just really really moisture retentive but also has a really high air ratio in the media i'm not sure it just yeah it's really really wet in there it's wicking really well so i think lava rock could potentially be something that i'm using more going forward based off of this again if we look at the large pumice this has surprised me so, a water reservoir on the bottom there. This piece of pumice is like wet. And this piece of pumice is really wet. So is this piece. There are a few bits in here that are dry. If I just kind of touch this, I don't know if you can see on my really gross hands at the moment, my moving hands. But for the majority of this, it is pretty moist in there. That top rock is pretty moist. Um, so that's pretty moist all the way to the top. Again, lecker. It is really, really moist. So I feel like having these in these cups probably hasn't replicated precisely what would go on in a pot because with lecker I really struggle with the dry top layer. I don't know if you can see but that's pretty moist all the way to the top again. So I think having this these pots as like a humidity shield means that I'm not getting like a true result as to what would happen in the pot. Um, but they kind of show the capacity like with the bark they did have more of a dry top layer and I think the lecker is more dry at the top than the lava rock just looking at them but again how do I measure this like how can I possibly measure how dry just that top layer is I mean I would say that the lava rock is more moist to the top than the lecker though so Potentially, it seems to hold more water in lecker. We know that from the test that I did soaking them and then measuring the weight after I'd soaked them versus when they were dry. We know that lava rock holds more water than lecker. So maybe that's a factor in the wicking efficiency. If we look at the pumice in the different brands that I did, 
This is the lava light pumice. Again, it's pretty pretty moist in there. And so is the Kaysen bonsai pumice. I'm struggling with this a little bit because how do I measure this? But I would say that this brand is more moist to the top than this brand, but they both have moisture levels up to the top. And if I feel them, they are both damp on the top. So again, they have wicked the water well to the top of the pot. The small pumice, interestingly, it's got no water reservoir left. It's used it all, sucked it up and evaporated it. So really, should we be looking at how much water they have left in the reservoir? Because that is basically wicked all of the water to the top and dried. So the evaporation rate has been quite high on this because of how moisture retentive it is and how it kind of sucks the moisture. Um, I don't know. So basically, I don't know how to quantify a wicking test. All of these materials have wicked. I feel surprisingly like the lava rock has wicked much better than the lecker has remained much more moist at the top than the lecker or the pumice. So that's surprising to me. The bark also wicked, which was surprising to me. I think the something like the super light black, which is like a small grade lacquer, has remained much more moist on the top than the larger grade lacquer. Um, but that's also about contact between media, I think. And something like this is going to have less air gaps in the media. So it's going to possibly wick more efficiently from the reservoir up to the top because each media has more contact with each other. So you could say that for anything, that a smaller grade is possibly going to wick better than a larger grade. Um, but yeah, I keep coming back to this lava rock because this is a relatively large grade compared to some of the pumice, but I really think it is much more moist to the top. And you could say that's because I've tipped it now, but... It's moist all the way round, and I haven't tipped it all the way round. Like, so I don't know. But I'm going to use lava rock a bit more off the back of this. And I was very surprised by this because I, I again, I thought that lava rock was quite dry, um, but it isn't. It doesn't seem to be. So I'm going to use it more, and we're going to see how my orchids respond to that. Because at the end of the day, we can quantify these things to a certain extent, but at some point we have to just put them in pots and see how our orchids respond to them and how they act in the pots because there are lots and lots of external variables at play that we just can't always know from doing experiments like this. Um, so I'm going to try Lava Rock out more. Thanks so much for watching this and uh, let me know if you have any ideas about how to quantify just this top layer. Uh, I could pick them all off I guess and weigh them, but then am I putting them back in the right like when I first measure the dry weight, I, I don't know. I guess that's something I could do. Do I want to do it though? Is that going to take huge amounts of time? Probably. And how much is it going to tell us really? Probably, probably not that much. I could put a dot on one rock, I guess, of each and weigh that before and after and see how the water is wicked up from the bottom just to that one piece of media, maybe. But at the end of the day, I think sometimes we just have to go by how we feel about a media and just try it out in a pot with plants. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna see how things go and how the roots stay moist because that's something else that can tell us like with a Phalaenopsis, are the roots still white at the top? Are they staying green like right up to the top where the, the moisture is present all the way to the top? I'm going to try them out and um, I'm sorry that this isn't more definitive or quantitative but I guess if anything this video is me discovering lava rock. Um, so I hope that this has been useful or interesting. Thank you so much for watching today anyway. Let me know if you have any suggestions about how to measure that top layer like in a really good solid quantitative way with numbers because I just can't think of a way to do it that's going to be reliable and that I'm going to be able to do exactly the same for each media. I think sometimes we just have to go by feelings uh, because growing plants is as much an art I guess as a science and it's kind of a combination of both of those things and we can use these sort of experiments to inform us 
and then just try them out and keep an open mind. So I hope that this has been useful and thank you so much for watching today and let me know any suggestions or comments down below and I'll see you guys all later. Bye! <laughs>